Hi, today we're working with fleece again, but this time we're going to double-sided, super soft fleece. And is it beautiful and colorful? I'll show you how to make them. Join us. Hi, this is Tweek. I love fleece. It's soft, it's washable, it's durable, and I'm known in my family for working with some fleece and giving it out as blankets. I love doing that too. Well, usually when I see a pattern for fleece, I think of the people it reminds me of, of babies, of siblings, of aunts or uncles. And this time when I saw this fleece fabric, I thought of myself. Colors I love, an image I love. It's got a French theme going here. However brilliant and vibrant this fabric was on one side, it wasn't on the other. It was very faded. And I got to thinking, well, what can I do about that? Ha ha. What about if I added another fleece layer on the other side and stitched them together? And that's what I came up with, this beautiful purple fleece to complement the front of that fabric. So I'll show you how I did to make these super soft, super softy blanket. The supplies you'll need for this project are some fleece fabric. I use one yard for a child size blanket, two yards for a comforter type blanket, and three yards if there's anyone in your family who's taller, three yards offers the most comfort for them. You'll also need a crochet hook, some yarn, a puncher, and a pair of scissors. The fabric I'm going to demonstrate for you today and how I get it started, usually I will take the fleece fabric and I will do one layer which is soft enough and nice enough for a comfortable blanket. Because I'm making two layers, I have to do that process twice with two pieces of fabric. And let me show you. When you get it off the roll, it comes with an edge. And the edge usually is kind of snarled up on the very fine piece of the fabric. See, I unrolled a little bit and then you can see what kind of fabric it is. I want all that off and that means just taking your scissors, going along the edge and snipping that off. There's a nice line to follow on this side and I'm going to do that. Take a pair of scissors and cut. Come all the way down. Unroll a little bit as you go if you have to. It's almost like a ribbon at the end there where the fabric gets unfleecy and has their logo on it. Okay, so we're at the edge of our fabric and I'm gonna use my Fiskars puncher. This is a 1 16th inch needle puncher and I'm going to place it on the edge of the fabric towards the corner and make a punch. Make a few so you can see. And I'm using the puncher itself as a guide to keep me, I'm about Oh geez, not even a half inch off the edge of the fabric. And I'm just gonna move along and punch as I go. But if you ever lose your way, you set your fabric down and give your hand a rest, pick up the fabric, and if you stretch it a little bit, you can see where the last punch was and you know where to start again. So what you do is punch all the way around the circumference of your fabric. Keep punching till it's all done. And for today's project, I showed you that for demonstration. I'm going to work with a darker color, which is a little harder to see, which is why I wanted to use the lighter color to show you. I've got a blue here. Now this is a big chunk of fabric. This is three yards and I already have it punched. I'm going to go all the way around with a very simple crochet stitch. And let me show you how we do that. I have my crochet hook. It's a size G. I'm just comfortable with that size hook. And I have some yarn here. This is a four ply yarn. I like the looks of it with the blue. Now the whole idea here is I'm going to take two big chunks of fleece and hook them together for one super softy. A trick to getting the insides of these out is to wiggle your fingers on the inside. I saw this, somebody demonstrated for me. And then you can very easily pull out there we go. I'm going to put him over here. I've got a big bunch here to deal with, but it'll all get used up, believe me. So I'm going to find my beginning. Oh, isn't this yarn pretty? It's got a little bit of a sheen to it. So I've come to the end and I'm going to go to the corner of the fleece and I'm going to come one or two holes back from the corner 
stick my crochet hook in and pull the yarn through. I'm going to make a very simple knot. One, two. I'm going to go back to a real simple stitch that I've been using on my fleece blankets. We just put the hook in and bring the yarn back through and you have a little loop there and pull the yarn through your first loop. Now I have one loop on the hook. I'm going to go to the next hole, go through, pull the yarn through. Now I have two loops on the hook and just pull the yarn through. It's called a single crochet stitch. Now I'm at a corner and believe it or not, the fleece is very amiable to accepting at least five stitches into that one hole. So one, two, I'm hiding this little edge as I go, that little edgy yarn that's left over, the little tail. Three, four, five. And I use five stitches to make the corner on the blanket. And now I'm going to put a singular stitch into every hole along the whole edge of the blanket. And here we go. Pull through, you have two loops, pull the yarn through onto the next hole. Repeat, repeat, repeat all the way around. You can see what you've got, a very pretty simple edge on the fleece. Most important thing when you get this piece done and want to attach the next piece is make sure the pieces are the same length or same size. I've got two three yard pieces of fleece. Ooh, almost done. It's taken me about an hour and a half to work my way around, but this is a three yard piece of fabric, so it takes a little longer. Almost done. A few more stitches here. One, two. Okay, so I'm going to come back into the first stitch spot. And now I'm going to come under and just pull this through. So I'm going under the stitch that's there and just pulling through. So I'm taking the stitch back up a few to hide the ending. One more. Let's see. Get under both sides of that. Well, this yarn is so tangly sometimes. It is pretty though. Work my way back out of that. Okay, come under. There, we got it. All right, I'm gonna cut. right make a knot and I'm gonna come back under again and pull that tail to hide it I'm only gonna go off a couple because I'm gonna come around the whole thing again as I stitch the two together and that will hide that spot I'll do one more okay I'm gonna snip off that edge and it will disappear into the rest of the fabric there we go. So what do we have got here? We've got a very pretty blue piece of fleece, three yards long, with a real nice edging. And I'm going to add to this, this green. I use the same edging for both pieces. And here's the tail. I didn't hide in this one. I wanted to let myself know where the ending corner was. <laughs> so what I do is take the, I don't think there's a right or wrong side to the fabric. Just choose what looks nice to you. If it was a pattern, I'd worry, but I'd make sure that was the side I wanted. But with the solid fabric, I'm just going to buddy up the two ends. So I'm going to take these two corners. Now there's a longer side on this fabric and a shorter side. It's like a big rectangle, so I want to make sure before I start. See, I've got the short side. So very important to make sure wherever you start, you've got the two 
short sides on the rectangle together. So I'm just kind of coming along here, making sure they're going to meet up. These fabrics were the same size. So there's a corner. And as I stitch these together, I'm going to come back through and just make sure they're buddied up. And if there's a discrepancy, I can add a couple stitches in it. Look at that. Very nice because it's the same size fabric, the same width. So there's a lot of fabric in front of you, so just go a little at a time. And we're going to do the same stitch just to hook them all together. This is going to be oh so beautiful, snugly. So I'm going to come in a couple back. I always come a couple back from the corner. I'm just going to slide under these stitches here to get this started. I'm pulling the fabric, I'm pulling the yarn through both sides and make a nice tight knot, simple knot. There's our start. I'm going to pull that through and have one loop on the hook. I'm going to come up to the next one, go under those two stitches. So I'm repeating the same pattern I did in going around when this time I'm going to come under you can see the little stitches, see how they're little, like a chain going down. I'm just going to buddy up the stitches, come under both, and make a stitch above. So see the two little chains, go under, bring the yarn up, come through the two little loops. Because I did the punching myself, it might be a little bit irregular, so that's why I'm mindful to keep track of the little stitches here to buddy them up together. So as I go, if I come to a spot, or if I come to a point where I think, oops, one side has a little more stitch than the other, I will just adjust. I'll show you. Come under here, and to adjust, I would go under the same stitch I left and go to the next stitch over, and that ends up altering the little buddy one over. And that's how I make do for any irregularities I find as I go through. Makes a nice solid stitch on the top too. Pretty durable. So I go like three, four stitches and then I adjust and make sure that my buddy system is working. Buddy up the stitches. See? And you just keep doing that and slowly work your way around. That's looking good. When they're lined up it goes very quickly. When they're a little off you gotta wiggle around the stitches to make them line up again. A little bit of a bump here. Tiny bump. Let's see here. Oh, it's fine. It's it's homemade. It's gonna have a few little bumps, isn't it? I'm just gonna dig under this stuff here and pull it through a few times. Get that green all the way up the side. Put a knot in there. Snip that tail off. That'll disappear into the iron. And then this little tail I'm gonna work back in. It's got a little bump, but okay, it's my homemade label. <laughs> and give this a snip. And let's see what we've got. I used a variegated yarn which made a different color kind of travel across the blanket. And look at the other side, how pretty that is. I pulled in the blue and the green together. This is a beautiful big blanket. The person that gets this blanket, well he wanted a nice big blanket. Now he's going to have one. It took a day to make this blanket, but somebody will use it for a long time to come. Now let me show you some of the others that I made. This one was three yards long. Oh, this one was so cute. I found this otter pattern and I paired it up with pink. <gasps> That's pretty bright, huh? Look at that though. You see that? Pretty on either side. Let me show you another. Oh, this one, I really like this one too. Little sloths. And I changed up the edging a little bit. On the yellow fabric, I used the green around the whole edging. Then on the sloth side, I used the green on the whole edging. And then it went around the whole thing in yellow. So you end up with this really pretty edge on there. That one's pretty. 
But my favorite is the one I began with, and that is the purple one. And ordinarily I give things away, but this one is gonna stay with me with the purple inside. Isn't that pretty? And there you have it. We took our fleece, a pattern that I love, matched up two bits of fabric together to get a double-sided blanket that's soft. It's a super softy, and it is gorgeous, lovely to snuggle into, and makes a wonderful gift. So if you like what you've seen here today, give us a like, subscribe to our channel, and be sure to ring the bell so you know what episode is coming up next on Tweaks with Tweak. Until then, snuggle up into one of these. It's a lovely way to give somebody a hug. See you again.